Hi everyone, a pleasure to be here. I'm Roberto Ferrari, partner of BIP Consulting, and today we will talk about um, the details and the of the opportunities given by open banking into the non-financial sectors. As said, uh, we will go through the presentation talking about what are the opportunities to non-financial players given by the open banking. I've been working for more than a decade on digital financial services. Uh, now, as I said, I am partner of BIP. Prior to that, I was managing director, general manager of Kebanca, an Italian digital bank, and I've been chief digital innovation officer of Mediobanca Banking Group. So uh, I have quite a lot of experience in digital banking and now in open banking. And uh, I am now uh, co-head of the practice of open banking in BIP, which is a practice of more than 15 professionals spread internationally. We work on projects not just uh, in Italy or in Europe, but internationally uh, across the world, and not just for financial institutions, but also for non-financial players or large organizations and institutions like, uh, uh, for instance, the uh, Brazilian Banking Association. So we are international because open banking is an international trend and is something that is actually uh, spreading across, across the world. Uh, this is a picture which shows in red those countries where open banking has been first enforced by the law, by new regulations, like uh, in Europe with the, 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 the so famous uh, PSD2, or like in the UK by the open banking legislation. But there are other countries where, like in the United States, for instance, or in South Africa, where open banking actually is happening uh, thanks to new market forces which seize the opportunities and want to exploit them. So from Canada, basically, to Australia, is the whole world which is working now on the open banking opportunities. Uh, among them, among them uh, there are many organizations which already don't belong to financial institutions. They are not bank. We are seeing that, for instance, in Europe. In Europe, there is a good percentage of activities which is actually uh, given by, for instance, players into the travel industry, players into the utilities or media or telecom companies. Why, why they're doing that? What's, what are the key elements which trigger them really to exploit these opportunities and create, and create new businesses? Uh, there are two main factors which you have to bear in mind that are very important. The first one is if the company has got a very large user base. That's the first prerequisite in, in our view. The second, the second prerequisite is if the company has got a large number of transactions with their own customers or large transactions. Okay. In both cases, there might, there might be an opportunity, a business opportunity in order to see if there is really business that can come up out of open banking activities. And there is another factor which is also important in order to really fully exploit and engage with open banking. It's the fact that there are in Europe as well in the rest of the world now hundreds, I would say, of um, fintech startups which have become basically tech providers, new digital providers, and they provide full white label end-to-end -end digital solutions to non-financial players uh, that really enable them to exploit open banking as we will see in the following chart. So if you are a non-banking uh, business, basically, you don't have to build your, um, your structure uh, from, from scratch by yourself. You can rely on uh, white label suppliers that can help you out. In Europe, uh, for instance, there are hundreds of third party providers 
which uh, they can work both directly to the consumers than on a B2B basis that are really active uh, across each single country. And the most active is definitely the UK, which started with the open banking legislation more than one year before uh, the continental Europe. And we can see in, in the UK uh, hundreds of, of millions of calls in each month uh, for given by, by the open banking um, solutions. What are the open calls are basically the request of information or access to each single account for each single customer. That means that, for instance, in the UK right now, there are about 700 million requests for each month uh, to which goes which go to the uh, bank accounts of the customer for reasons which are related to open banking uh, solutions and and services, and this is a number which is double the number versus one year ago, and obviously more than ten times versus two years ago when basically open banking practice started in the UK. So we expect the same type of trend in those countries where really open banking will be. Uh, embraced also thanks to new new coming legislation or coming legislations, and, uh, and this is really important uh, in terms of creating new business opportunities like new revenues, or also uh, gaining more and more efficiencies. In Italy, for instance, for instance, has been estimated that, that uh, new business opportunities will account for about 800 million euros in a few in a few years by 2025 and this will be given as i said by different areas of uh, new services or cross-selling lending and other other opportunities that will start up uh, thanks to open banking and we'll go now a little bit in details to see how this really works uh, and it's happening in uh, in uh, in details the first the first thing is when you become a PISP PISP means uh, a payment initiator service provider that means that you have gained by law uh, uh, the direct access to a bank account of your own customer so you don't have any longer to rely only on an online acquirer such as PayPal or Stripe or other, other, other players. So when you, for instance, are a utility company, an energy company, maybe you have your own app, so you can have in your app uh, the possibility of including a direct access in terms of payments opportunity, a direct access to with the co consumer consent to the bank account of the customer. So you can integrate this function into your own app. This will allow you, for instance, to, uh, uh, to give the customer the opportunity to select the bills to pay and to authorize then the utility, the energy company to uh, uh, get the payments directly from from the bank uh, from the bank account, obviously with the customer consent, which is being then granted by SCA strong customer authorization, which basically it, it, it's a mean to uh, get uh, customer authorization also through one time password and and uh, and uh, your own credentials, secure credentials. So in a very safe environment consumers can give direct access to um, the, the, the utility company or any other non-financial institution in order to pay for certain specific services the financial the non-financial institutions is actually uh, um, offering to to the customer that's the first type of activity that can be created other cases uh, um, come when you don't only uh, get uh, uh, your activity, your authorization as a payment initiator, but also as an account information service provider. What, what that means? That means that you can have the authorization to aggregate in your own software in only one place all the information coming from all the bank accounts and the payment accounts of the customers. So you can offer uh, this software basically to the customer. The customer basically gives you the authorization to get access uh, to every single bank account. And thanks to that, you can develop, um, thanks to your own software, which has been obviously 
enhanced by marketing intelligence and artificial intelligence tools. You can create your own uh, financial planner uh, analytics. You can create your own um, services in terms of advanced liquidity management. And you can give advice to your own customers how to save more money, for instance, how to, uh, to pay attention to the liquidity, and most importantly, how to you, you can um, create uh, um, cross-selling, maybe you can sell new services. Because we have seen that, for instance, uh, the, uh, the, your customer has got a car insurance, so you can offer a different type of car insurance. You have seen that your customer is using Amazon or other, or other uh, marketplaces, so you can create loyalty programs which are linked, for instance, to, to those players. So there is really a lot you can, you can do once you have really the, the access to the payment and transaction elements of your own customers, and you can apply your own uh, artificial intelligence and algorithms to really create uh, um, uh, new services uh, for the for the consumers, and this is uh, also particularly important in the moment you really want to create lending services, which is one of the most frequent use cases we've seen in, in, over the last months popping up in in Europe, where you can also plug credit scoring. Um, facilities and uh, uh, capabilities into your own app, your own software, maybe also provided by third party. Again, you don't have to create your own uh, credit scoring by yourself. There are providers of credit scoring that you can plug into your into your own software and services, and this will allows you allow you basically to create a single scoring for each client of yours. So creating maybe lending opportunities, credit cards opportunities, or other statistics and analytics, which will allow you, uh, for, instance, if the, for instance, if the consumer is, uh, is late with his own payments, also to go to uh, and find solutions in order to get uh, the payments back uh, um, on your on your on your bill account or the billing account. So there are really many many opportunities given by the fact that your own customer data, obviously with the customer consent, and you can apply on this customer data uh, artificial intelligence software and algorithms um, on this. We can see together some of the cases which are popping up, especially in Italy, and especially in the utility and energy arena. Uh, Enel, I think uh, you probably know Enel. Enel is uh, one of the most important energy electricity provider, provider in the world. They have, for instance, and we will talk later also uh, about Enelix, uh, they have really created a new, um, a new basically, uh, spin-off, which is called Enelix, which is supposed to work on all the alternative energy and all the new digital services from Enel. And they have created by themselves a, a new division, which is called Enel Pay, which has got authorization from the Italian bank, Bank of Italy, to uh, provide both um, payment initiator services and account initiator services. And they have been plugging these uh, uh, new activities and new services into their own app. We will talk then uh, about specifically about this case. But I mean, this shows also how big companies uh, are really starting and actively thinking of, of, of really how to uh, implement open banking solutions into, into their own core business. Um, Poste Pay is coming from the Italian uh, Poste, uh, Italian post service mail, per postal service main services. Again, they have applied for both PISP and ISP um, authorizations. This is, this is important. I mean, what we have seen is that in most cases, once you decide to create your own open banking uh, spin off or anyway division, you apply in most cases for both of, of them because this really gives uh, you a full power in terms of really capacity of exploiting the power of, of data. So, NL, uh, so Poste has been basically the same with NLX. Poste is obviously a huge player in Italy. They also have a telco 
a telco business, uh, not just a, a postal business or a payment business. So if they are working on how to integrate the open banking features and the data opportunities into their into the this all this business. So from telco to banking to postal services. Iran is uh, is like Enel is a competitor, is an energy local uh, energy provided, multi utilities as well. They be, they started to work already in how to in the in the bill cache bills cashine we have seen uh, before a chart really use case talking about this. So they've started from there. You have to think this for the multi utilities. This is very important. If you have direct access to uh, the bank account and you have, as I said, many transactions to handle, if you get an authorization as a payment institution provider, you basically save a lot of money because you don't have to go necessarily always every time to uh, the, a, <clears throat> an online uh, gateway, payment gateway such as PayPal or Stripe or whatever. So you have direct access so your cost for each single transaction goes significantly down. So this is important because this is maybe the first step, is the first key to think in how and why to start thinking and start a project on open banking if you are exactly in this case. Um, we've seen many cases like this, um, also not coming definitely all, or only from the utilities. For instance, in terms of uh, also creating um, new business opportunities. Uh, Team System is a good example. They they are a B2B uh, software provider for small businesses in Italy, is the market leader, is the co-leader together with another company. They have gained gain authorization as well. They've created their, their own open banking spin-off uh, and they've got the authorization from the Bank of Italy. Why they are doing that? What's their purpose? They already sell uh, invoices, software to millions of Italians, small businesses. But once you issue an invoice, then you have your, your, uh, your client has to pay for that invoice. So here is the gain for a team system. They become a payment provider. So to the, they go now, they will go now to their own clients to say, hello, I'm not just providing the software to issue the invoice. I'm providing the software to issue the invoice plus to uh, enable your own customer to directly pay uh, via this software uh, from their bank account to your bank account. So this is a huge opportunity for Team System and can be uh, so a huge opportunity as an example for any software provider of invoicing and building uh, solutions to small businesses to and to and to corporate. So as you see, this goes far beyond uh, uh, just uh, paying a bill or far beyond just maybe making a single a single transaction. And this is a big uh, this is a big opportunity that banks uh, have have missed because they have they have uh, customer uh, customer uh, as uh, SME small business customers, but I have seen in my life really maybe just two or three banks thinking like that. So uh, providing invoice um, software to their own uh, customers, corporate customers, or small business customers, and even integrating payments into this software. So where banks fail, there is an opportunity here for non-financial institutions. And this can go on. CRIF uh, uh, is providing, for instance, credit, credit bureau services and integrating this into their software application and into their uh, intelligence uh, application, business intelligence applications as well to corporate and to small business as well. Ova Money is, is a fintech company which has basically integrated open banking solutions into well management offering, uh, uh, taking a leverage from obviously the account aggregation. So and so providing savings uh, opportunities and small investment opportunities as well to their own customers. So increasing the level and the number of services uh, to their own customer base. And we can continue like that with many, many other uh, other cases which are really popping up, not from 
standard and traditional financial services. As I said, Analyx Pay is becoming a huge uh, um, example in Italy. They are, are very active already with their uh, uh, business. Uh, what they really have in mind is not just um, managing the customers from a payment standpoint via traditional bill payments, uh, since they're working heavily on, on, the, um, on their own um, solutions in terms, in terms of uh, energy for, uh, for, for the cars, so for the electric cars, so providing electricity services to their own car, to the cars, to customers. So what they are actually doing is thinking of um, coupling a software in their own app which basically will allow them to provide to car drivers the opportunity when they go and, and take the electricity, the full the, the electricity for their own cars to pay directly via the app, talk, uh, talk with, with the, the uh, smart totems of Enel and have a direct transaction and have a direct transaction. And from these, there are many, many other uh, services, uh, collateral services, which are uh, cross-selling, which are thinking like, for instance, microinsurance for car drivers as well, or for, for obviously homeowners, which are related to home insurance and, and so on. So there is a huge opportunity, which they've already started to uh, plug into their own business. And this is a real case happening now in Italy. So, at the end, in conclusion, what we can really say, um, first of all, open banking is not just for financial institutions. I think this is clear now. Open banking can be probably uh, mostly uh, seen and overseen and exploited by uh, not just the fintech uh, companies, but as we said, from utilities, telco, media uh, companies, or from everything which uh, is about commerce. So commerce can be digital commerce, and so e-commerce players, for instance, can be very interested, or retailing uh, companies which again have millions of customers, they have frequent transactions, they maybe have their loyalty cards, so there is a huge opportunity into integrating open banking data and, and then services into your own loyalty program, especially if the loyalty program consists of millions of, of customers. But on the other side, you have to think also to government services, uh, as as BP, we've been also working on these, as well as on uh, with media companies or with utility uh, companies and petrol companies is another one. And uh, so, because I mean, you have customers, so you have to service those customers, and there are there are a lot of payment, there are a lot of payments out of that. So you can manage that and exploit and save money also via the open banking services that you could provide to your own customer. If you think of the petrol companies as well, they usually have uh, loyalty cards as well, so they can exploit this as uh, Enel is thinking of doing it uh, for their own energy business for, for the cars by themselves. And, uh, and there are companies in Italy we have seen uh, start working on this. So um, utilities, we've talked about the utilities, and so there are really many opportunities which come, as I said, from cross-selling and like instant insurance for investment, for uh, coming from loyalty opportunities. So maybe from e-commerce and from additional uh, offers that you can give to your customers. Cross-selling is also part of the credit and instant lending that you can create to your own customers as well. Or there is a cost saving opportunities as uh, opportunity as I was mentioning before. If you have many and many transactions, uh, uh, you can skip uh, part of these transactions uh, uh, through the through the usual payment gateways 
and credit, uh, credit cards provide, payment providers, you can go straight to your own customers. And there is here a huge, a huge potential in terms of savings at the very beginning you can, you can create. So obviously you have to build your own business case. Uh, you, you have to make up your numbers. But believe me, this is, uh, uh, this is, this is now uh, something which is happening. It's a, storm, it's a storm at the very beginning that will definitely change the way we think of financial services uh, and we'll be thinking of financial services as customers in the future. So I hope this has been helpful for you and uh, I'm open to obviously to your questions. Uh, ready to answer as much as possible. Here also you can find my email and uh, telephone number. As I said, I'm um, co-ed lead of the Open Banking Practice in BIP and uh, ready to answer 20 questions. Thank you very much for your attention anyway.